ideas, the foremost known as critical theory. The idea behind critical theory is to challenge all previously accepted standards in every aspect of life from a Marxist perspective. Standards such as Abe Lincoln was honest, home is where the heart is, democracy and capitalism are good, the founders believed in freedom. In doing this, every negative thing one could possibly say about America was dredged up circulated in books, movies, TV, schools, colleges, and even the clergy, so that the youth would be endlessly indoctrinated. Things like, white men killed the Indians, fathers were repressive, God is dead, the founders had slaves. They did have a problem, which was that although slavery was technically legal throughout all the colonies, only some of the colonies really had slave-based economies the southern states, Maryland, south, essentially. And therefore, they had to deal with the practical problem of how could you integrate these states with the northern and middle colonies, middle states and northern states, in a way that would, as much as possible, unify them. So they had to make some kind of initial political compromises with the social institutions that existed in the southern states. But there was a mindset at the time that slavery would essentially wither away because it was not a practical economic concern in the long run. But it certainly was not a matter that could be criticized from the point of view of, of principle. Uh, you know, the first principle in the preamble is to create a more perfect union. That was their first goal. But when the consciousness challenged baby boomers repeatedly heard that the establishment, as they came to refer to it, was a bunch of racist, overly religious, sexually deprived sexists who were xenophobic Indian killers and anti-Semites, they internalized the criticisms. Soon their movies and songs began to reflect these values, spreading them throughout the nation's youth culture. Critical theory was doing its job, especially on people like Charles Manson and John Lennon. Even though the reality-challenged baby boomers of the 1960s were the most free, most affluent, and most privileged of any youth in any age, they were bored with their lives and swallowed the Frankfurt School's propaganda like a hit of California sunshine. Books like The Death of the Family, Escape from Freedom, the mass psychology of fascism, the sexual revolution, the joy of sex, and the authoritarian personality flew off the shelves. Counterculture drug movies like The Trip, Easy Rider, The Wild Angels, The Wild Bunch, and Born Loser played theaters endlessly. Books like Authoritarian Personality were particular hits because they attacked the patriarchal family unit a deeply Christian institution. So along came movies depicting the family unit as sexually repressed and dysfunctional. Movies like Battle of the Sexes, How to Handle Your Wife, Harold and Maude, The Graduate, Bonnie and Clyde, Carnal Knowledge, Bob and Ted and Carol and Alice, Boys in the Band, The Godfather, and Kramer vs. Kramer instilled cultural pessimism about families. Uh, the basic unit of a family is where a male uh, as a sex uh, joins with a female as a sex and they're able to work together to help each other and by being able to work together to help each other they perfect each other, they love each other, they care for each other and in the process they learn to love and perfect and care for others within the society. They become good citizens because they're good citizens within their own home and that produces a society that loves each other. It's, marriage is a particularly Judeo-Christian institution. It, it was Jesus who instituted uh, one man and one wife uh, forever shall become one flesh. By targeting the family unit, the cultural Marxists knew they could eventually destroy the middle class of the United States. Why? Because the family unit is the basic building block of the middle class destroy the middle class, and you eventually destroy the economic engine of the United States. Destroy the economic engine of the U.S. and its political structure, built on capitalism and the Constitution, crumbles. Uh, I just recently um, 
had had some shares stolen from me on the stock market by our government, who who seized 80 percent of uh, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac shares. I'm like, how, how could this happen? And they, they seized, um, you know, private property. The whole point of a socialistic society is to do four things. Marx talks about destroying the family, two, destroying property, three, destroying religion, and four, destroying the nation. And what you end up with is the gulag, where the whole country becomes the Soviet Union. Yes, critical theory is diabolical genius. The cultural Marxist could accomplish what Marx, Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin only dreamed of accomplishing. Whereas Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin took Marx's ideas and delivered the brutal Soviet Union to the world, Gramsci, Lukacs, and Marcuse took Marx's ideas and delivered user-friendly cultural Marxism to America. The Supreme Court has been converted into a fighting ally of secularism in the wars against traditionalism in the United States. The Supreme Court has perverted the Constitution. It has usurped power that belongs to the states and imposed secular views and values on the states and on the communities, making decisions that used to be made democratically at the local level. This time, it seems, Marx won. Today, post-Engel, politically correct baby boomers are so completely immersed in the Frankfurt School's cultural pessimism, they can't see the forest for the trees. They're fish in a bowl of muddy water. They're Neo in the Matrix. They swim in it. They absorb it through every pore of their beingness. Starting in the 1960s, cultural Marxism has woven its values into every American's very existence. Khrushchev was right when he said, we will bury you.